Hey folks and welcome to another video of mine. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Tekken 8 on my PlayStation 5 versus PC. Now, of course, I don't have a copy of this on my Xbox. So this comparison is purely between the PlayStation 5 and the PC version of this game. This is a cross-platform game. And uh, there is a great significance in that word cross-platform. And I'm going to talk about that in a short bit. But... Uh, at the start of the video, I would just like to mention that this is not a technical analysis of the game in any way. I'm not a technical person, but I'm just sharing my experience having played this on both my PlayStation 5 and on the PC. Now, the PC that I'm playing this on is my Asus ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition from 2021, which has a 12 GB dedicated graphic card, which is the RX 6800M. So that should give you some context. Now, while I was playing this on the PC, I was playing this on native 4K. I had FSR 2 turned on performance mode. And uh, that's about it. I mean, uh, my PC chose the best settings possible for this game. So I did not uh, do any kind of, a, you could say, a mishmash after that, because whatever settings the PC chose, I just went along with it. On the PlayStation 5, obviously, this, I think, runs on dynamic resolution, and I'm going to talk about why that's important in a short bit. But um, this is not exactly a review. Maybe I might post a review video on my channel after this video comes out. But what do I want to talk about in this video? I just want to talk about my experience on both the platforms. Again, not a technical analysis, but what I've noticed on both these platforms. Now, both platforms, by the way, they bring Tekken's vibrant world to life in stunning detail. Now, this is one of those first fighting games which have been made using Unreal Engine 5. So, PS5's dynamic lighting and textures, they paint a gorgeous picture. You can literally see sweat glistening on Jin's muscles and those neon signs reflecting off Kazuya's eyes. PC, on the other hand, it counters with the freedom of higher resolutions and customizability. And it allows you to crank up the graphical fidelity for a truly next-gen experience. And like I told you, I was playing this on native 4K. Now, if you could dial the resolution down, like 1440p or 1080p, then you may have got better frame rates. Now, speaking of frame rates, I have put that frame rate counter on. So, if you're watching this video, I would recommend that you watch this video on a large screen. A big screen. Even a tablet would suffice, but a mobile phone, well, it will not do justice to what this video has to offer because that frame rate counter it will be really tiny and you may miss that now why i wanted to put that frame rate counter on screen was because it just shows you that the level of optimization that the, that the developers have done is um extremely good why because you remember i spoke about that word cross-platform now that is extremely important here now because this is a cross-platform game it has to be optimized because any kind of a lag, any kind of a delay, any kind of a frame drop even may hinder your experience. And if you are um, in this competitive battle with your friends and buddies or maybe with somebody um, from some part of the world, then that frame rate, that no lag would definitely matter because that could be the difference between winning and losing. So that's why if you're playing this on the PC, you have got to have a PC which uh, can literally push or technically push those high frame rates because uh, boy oh boy this game can get really fickle in terms of stability especially towards the end now for most parts of the game on my pc i was getting those high 50s and even in this gameplay you can notice that the frame rate counter has not even dropped below 50 in terms of the gameplay well some of those cutscenes they are more visually demanding so some of these cutscenes like you can see on screen it may drop to 29, 30, but for most parts and all across the game, in my three hours that I spent on the story mode, it was always in the 50s. Now, apart from the last battle between Kazuya and Jin, that literally juiced out my PC. And some of the uh, battles, even the gameplay, dropped to the 30s. In some cases, even the 20s in some extremely demanding scenes because the last battle between Kazuya and Jin, it's a particle fun fest. There are so many particle effects in that, that uh, 
it literally juices out whichever machine you're on. But speaking of m the machine that you're on, this is where PlayStation 5 really, really shines because it delivers that locked 60 FPS experience. So, Tekken, this game, well, it's all about precision. And because it's all about precision, it's extremely important that you have that locked 60 FPS experience. And that is something that you will definitely get on PlayStation 5. Combos flow seamlessly, counters land with satisfying impact, and even the most chaotic juggle combos feel buttery smooth on the PlayStation 5. Now, PC can technically push higher frame rates, but again, it depends on your PC configuration. Frame drops, they are a potential threat on rigs that are not built for Tekken's demanding dance of fists and fury. So, for competitive players, PlayStation 5's consistency in terms of performance is definitely a game changer but there are certain things that you can do on pc as well for instance mods uh, i've not even spoken about that when it comes to this so far but this is where the pc can truly shine because in terms of mods well it's a whole different game you can't do mods on your playstation 5 or any other console but on pc with time you will see more and more user mods coming out so you will definitely be able to customize this game a lot more so the customization options will definitely be better on pc but speaking of customization there's plenty in store even for console players because unlike some of the other games where earning credits in a game can really be a chore i mean it can you really have to hustle for those credits but on tekken 8 credits come easily so even on your consoles you can comfortably get into customizing your character a lot more so you need not be disappointed even if you can't access those mods like you can on the pc the playstation 5 will keep you busy because there's so many customization options and because you get those credits really easily well it's not going to be a problem you have loads and loads of cosmetic options even on the playstation 5 but yeah if you compare it to a pc it definitely will fall behind because uh, in a PC, you get that all-you-can-eat buffet in terms of customization. Now, some of these scenes I've just slowed down. If you just notice this scene, let me know in the comments section which scene do you think looks better. The PlayStation 5 or the PC version. Uh, here, you could see that there are slight changes in terms of um, the code. Especially when it comes to the surface. Notice the surface. I've slowed the scene down so that you can also um, keep that in mind. Now, I will slow down one more scene here moving forward so that you can take a look at the particle effects what do you think pc or playstation 5 i feel that there are more of those uh, light particles available on the pc compared to the playstation 5 but again you know this is the pc version and pc will obviously shine in terms of graphic fidelity but speaking of shining the playstation 5 is not far behind in fact it packs a solid punch when it comes to keeping things interesting um and Speaking of keeping things interesting, one of the areas where your PlayStation really, really shines is in the way you have the controller experience. The DualSense feedback, it brings every punch, every kick to life. And it lets you feel the sting of a block jab, that satisfying crunch of a landed knee. On my PC, obviously I had not connected my PlayStation controller, but I had a wired controller that I had purchased from a company called Power A. I have my unboxing and my review of that particular controller on my channel, so you can check that out as well. So, it was not an experience which was similar to that PlayStation 5's controller because it was inferior to that. So, if you're wanting that immersive experience even in your fingers, then PlayStation 5 is definitely the way to go. So if you're asking yourself that question, who takes the Iron Fist crown in terms of the PlayStation 5 versus PC? Well, I would say both are winners in their own ways. For competitive players who prioritize performance and stability, PlayStation 5 is the undisputed champion. It's locked 60 FPS and uh, even when it comes to the graphical resolution, right? I think it's scaling uh, because it's got that dynamic resolution that I spoke about. It's got dynamic lighting. Uh, so it scales from anything between, I believe, 1200 to 1600p up to 4K, but it's not a solid 4K. On my PC, however, I was playing this in native 4K. So it's that locked 60 FPS and also that reliable online play 
which provide a rock solid foundation for mastering your combos and climbing the ranks on the PlayStation 5. Because this is a cross platform game and uh, it's a game which also has uh, you playing with players all from all over the world, that locked 60 FPS will definitely make a difference. But for those who crave customization uh, without having the patience to earn those credits, then PC is the platform of choice because uh, you will definitely have mods which will come out on Nexus mods as well. And then there are those endless possibilities of uh, customized user mods and um, that creative expression that you can unleash when it comes to the PC version of this game. But ultimately, the platform you choose depends on your priorities. Do you want pure fighting finesse? Then PlayStation 5 is your dojo. If you crave a Tekken playground where you can unleash your inner fashionista, dive into the PC arena. But remem remember, no matter which platform you go for, what Tekken 8 has in store for you? Well, it promises epic battles and endless combos. So, and the combo, speaking of combos and speaking of battles, right? I mean, they are so fleshed out that even when you're playing the story mode, why that three hours was really interesting to me was every time Jin loses or gets a power, his entire moveset changes when you press that button. And that's what keeps it fresh. It's not like you're landing the same punch on pressing A on your controller. No. When Jin loses his power, when you press A, the moveset is different. Again, when he gains that extra power towards the end of the game, where he becomes like this angel, when you press that A, it changes. In fact, you'd be pressing X when you change into that angel Jin. So that's what keeps it fresh. You always have new moves that you will be getting when you press those buttons. It's not a button mashing feast, but you have to be really strategic in uh, choosing those moves wisely because that is going to make the difference when it comes to playing this with your friends and family members. Even when you're playing online, it depends on the character that you're choosing. And uh, you also have that RB that you play, that you press when you're playing with an Xbox controller and that will give you that heat version of the game so you'll be able to perform those extra, extra powerful move sets so again this is a game which shines on both the platforms and there there is no clear winner in this Tekken 8 throwdown between these two platforms but um, yes I, if I had to choose between these two platforms I probably will go along with the PlayStation 5 if I'm playing this competitively again I just like to drill this in and that's why I like repeating some of my points over and over again. And um, although, you know, I have played this on my PC uh, and I've completed the story mode, but there's so much more that it still has to offer. There's like this online mode, there's an offline mode, there's an arcade mode, which unlocks uh, specific cutscenes towards the end of uh, that arcade, uh, you could say, tar. And then you have... Um, um, Apart from the story mode as well, you can play with your friends in a versus mode, you can play online and you even have this silly volleyball game which um, is silly because uh, it doesn't get uh, things right all the time. But what I have to say about Tekken 8 is the experience does not end with that 3-hour story mode. In fact, it's got so much more. This is not a game where you sit down alone and play this. It's a game where you're sharing your game time with your friends and family members because that's when the real fun of Tekken 8 comes out and it shines when you're playing with other people, not all by yourself. If you're playing this all by yourself, you will get easily bored because the story mode is only three hours long. And apart from that, how much of an arcade battle are you going to get into? So that's uh, my two cents on my experience with Tekken 8 on both play, uh, on the PlayStation 5 and on the PC. Let me know what are your thoughts if you've played this game. And if you've liked the content of what you've seen on this video, then I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe button and also that bell icon in case you want to get notified with all my latest videos. And uh, YouTube algorithm has recently changed. So even when you share my videos, I get certain brownie points. I would greatly appreciate it if you could share this video with your friends and family members because, hey, YouTube algorithm, it helps. So I thank you in advance for helping me out and helping me uh, grow my channel. But uh, that's it for this video, folks, and I will see you lovely folks in my next video. Until that time, I'll say keep gaming and you can come back and share your experiences that you have had with Tekken 8. I'll see you lovely folks in my next one. It's a wrap for this one. Until that time, I'll say take care, stay safe, and may God bless you all.